Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with another painting tutorial. If any of you know me in the real world, you will know that Tau are one of my favorite armies. In order of armies from top three, it goes Imperial Guard, then it goes Tau, and then it goes Space Marines. So they are right up there. So I was super excited to see that Farsight is finally getting his new model, although it's like his third rendition of a model. But this one actually feels like Farsight. It looks like a special battle suit, wielding his beautiful sword, usual shield, and his nice red scheme. So I was very excited to get this thing painted up uh, and show you guys how to start a Farsight Enclave's army. So stick around guys and see how I do that. Before I get into the video though, I just want to say a huge thank you to all of my active patrons. Without you guys, I would not be able to keep the lights on or the cameras rolling. If you're interested in becoming a member of my Patreon, there's links to that below. Benefits include private Discord server and an extra video every single week just for you guys. That's 52 extra videos a year, which is kind of insane. Okay guys, without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, and here he is. I decided to go for full assembly. Um, he's entirely together as I'm painting him. Would I recommend you do this? Probably not. The biggest parts I would suggest leaving off are those big um, engine exhaust bits at the back. The huge big one on the left and right. It makes it a lot easier to get to those fins and stuff on his back. And you can leave his shield off if you want to. But other than that, you can leave it all together. From here, I used Flesh Hair's Red Contrast after I sprayed the model black and then gave it a gray sear, uh, kind of a heavy zenithal. Like I talked about in the World Leaders videos, if you watched that, Games Workshop seems to be pushing the color of models brighter and brighter for reasons that I don't quite understand. The color they have Farsight in the cover art, in the codex and stuff, in the, basically the new version of him, is a super bright, vibrant red. Like, he looks like a Blood Angel again. And... As far as I'm concerned, Farsight's in a more of a dark maroon colored armor than this bright and vibrant red. I feel like he's always been that kind of maroon color. So why they decided now to pump maybe just better for photographs, better for box art, stuff like that, I'm not really sure. I'm going to stick with the more traditional way. And that's why I've started with Flesh Tears Red Contrast. And I've applied that to all the panels of the armor that require red. This will start from a much darker place. I mean that when I layer it up later on, I don't have to go into such brighter colors to highlight. Black Templar was then used to fill in all the bits in between the red panel. So basically the exosuit of the armor, if you will, is black. You got to remember that Tau mostly use like hard polymers and stuff like that. Like not really metals. I think polymer is the right word. Is it a... Anyway, synthetic materials, things they can mass produce. Um, so the uh, I like the idea of there being lots of black instead of lots of metal. Um, in between all of the armor panels, all the soft seals, all the joints. This really does help break up the sea of red that this model would otherwise be. From here, we're going to move on to Lead Belcher, and this is for the sword. There isn't really any other metallic on this model, apart from some of the, the kind of bulby bits at the back of the exhaust are in this brass color, which I just don't understand why either, but it makes it look really cool. It pops really nice against the red, so no complaints here. Crazy origin of this blade is still unknown to uh, anybody, including Mr. Farsight himself. He has no idea where this sword came from. Retributor armor was then used for all those bits I was talking about, so on both of the exhaust jump pack parts. And then there's a design on the sword. And then just a few other really small key details around the model that we're going to do in gold. It's nothing crazy. It's not a lot. By the time you guys get your hands on Fireside, he'll be on the website. So you can look at 360 degree views of him, which will make it a lot easier. I was looking at a million reference pictures trying to figure out where it all goes. From here, we're going to add Skeleton and Horde. And this is just for his floaty ribbon things that come off the hilt of his sword and off his armor panels. The one on his left leg is a completely optional part. You can choose to just leave that off if you want. And then if you decide to not have ribbons, cutting it off the end of the sword would be super easy too. I really like the motion it adds, but I can understand if people don't want to add them. None of the other battle suits are going to have them, so it's going to stand out just a little bit. Null oil is then my shade of choice to wash the entire model. This is going to be a very precise shade. I'm going to be paying attention to each section as I shade it and making sure it does not pool anywhere I don't want it to. So I'm going to focus on the shield here, getting it in around all that lettering on the shield, but then I'm going to keep working the brush around, making sure that there's going to be no large droplets left. 
gunking up the paint job, making it harder to layer moving forward. So although it looks like I'm slapping it on, I'm being actually quite precise as to where I'm letting the shade pool. This is it with all the shade applied. And as you can see, it's selling into all the recesses very nicely. I can definitely see where I'm going to layer. As the shade dries, I just added a bit of textured paste. I'm gonna be doing the base as I go along. I'm not gonna talk about the base. Um, obviously everyone's gonna base their miniature their own way. You can have them on the rock and those trees are completely separate bits. If you don't like the kind of cherry blossom aesthetic, I think it's beautiful. Um, but it's once again up to you. Corn red was then the first red of choice I decided to go with for layering up the armor. Like I said earlier, because I started from a much darker place, I can go to a much darker layer paint, apply it, and it's still gonna act as my first highlight. I'm gonna try and make the armor panels look as smooth and clean as possible. I'm yet to decide to whether I'm going to weather this beast or not. Yeah, Farsight appears to be wearing a new suit of armor and I'm very curious to get my hands on the Arcs of Omen book for Farsight and find out where this suit of armor has come from, who built it for him or where he got his grubby paws on it. The fist on red was then the final layer that I'm gonna do for the armor, which would usually sit somewhere along the kind of mid-tone and then you go up to kind of Evil Sun Scarlet, Wild Rider Red to do crazier highlights. That would bring him to that look of the box art, which I think is too bright. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me on that as well. Do you think I, I'm right in the, he should be a little bit darker, more in the kind of crimsony maroon state? Or do you think the way they've changed them to be really bright and vibrant is the way they should go? It's all personal preference. But yeah, taking my time and I'm going to layer up this piece. Once again, using the shield as a great reference piece for the video. Another part of the scheme that I didn't really buy into, I'm still not sure whether I'm going to add it later on, I didn't do it in this particular tutorial, is there is definitely um, certain accent parts of the armor that they decide to give over to Burgundy. And if I'm being brutally honest, I didn't really notice until I'd already painted the miniature and then I had seen them and I debated with myself whether I should go back and try and add some of them. I may still do that. Um, but I think the model is broken up well enough with the, uh, the colors I've chosen so far, but it's up to, it's up to you really. The Corvus Black was then used to layer up all the black details on this miniature, so all the soft seals and all the joints in between all the armor panels, some of the trim on the sword, nothing too crazy. But yeah, around his chest and part of his shoulder pad is supposed to be this burgundy colour. Ulfwan Grey was my choice for highlighting and layering up all of the white sections. So obviously he's got a white helmet denoting his rank, and then there's a lot of white trim and detail around uh, the centre of his shield. Now all you need to do is hit the kind of bright flat panels of the shield and around the edges. You're not trying to get in between each letter with that color. That can stay as shadow. Nobody's going to notice. Nobody's going to think it looks weird. It, it looks really cool. That shield itself is a beautiful thing and I really do wish that uh, I could order up dozens of them and put them on all my battle suits. After that, Iron Breaker was used to highlight the sword blade and all of those brassy gold parts that we did. It's going to be a very quick touch highlight on the gold parts just add that little flash of uh, color and light reflection like I said these do just break up the red really nicely after that we're gonna go back to old one gray and we're gonna go to all the parts of the miniature that are supposed to be glowing so in between all the sept colors on his armor is supposed to be glowing there's points on the sword which i'm going to fill in with ulfwan gray that i'm going to want to be glowing um, and then he's got this kind of watch chrono thing as well so that mostly goes white after that we're going to hit it with talazar blue we're going to go over all the bits we just did in ulfwan gray to make them look as though they're glowing very quick and easy step it's the way i do lots of things like eyes and lenses and space marines and power swords and all that kind of stuff it's very quick making sure to get his little eyes he does have eyes built in underneath the hood of that helmet. Hopefully I show it to the camera in a minute, as you can see. Look. And at the end, it's Screamer Skull, or Screaming Skull to highlight those ribbons once again. The box art had these ribbons as the kind of bone color. If I was to go back and redo this, I'd be tempted to do them in like a pink or something, like the cherry blossoms. Like a rose color would be kind of cool. 
although it does work with the, the bone. And this is the final result. This is my finished far site ready for the tabletop. Painted him up in a day. And uh, yeah, I cannot wait to get the rest of the Border Control box set painted up to match his scheme. So he has a little force and then add him into my much larger Tau collection. A few mood pictures just to give you an idea of what he's going to look like in the end. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Okay guys, and there we have it. One fire site painted up and ready for the tabletop. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a like. Drop any questions you have in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you guys. And the algorithm tells me that about 60 to 70% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed currently. So I think you should change that and smash that subscribe button. Thank you guys so much for sticking around to the end of the video. Thank you so much to all my patrons. I'll see you guys in the next video.